Ngozungo Sujuba. I'm the Chair Interfaith Diversity Network of West Africa. For the intimate conviction, I've chosen the topic left behind by laws, policies and practices, lived realities of sexual minorities in West Africa. I will start with case studies from West Africa. I was the favorite member of the choir. Most congregation members say to me that my voice take away their sorrows and I am the reason they hurry to church on Sunday mornings. All that changed the day my friend told the pastor I was gay. The pastor asked me to leave the church as it was an abomination for someone like me to be in the church choir. I contemplated suicide. I thought the church was a place of acceptance and love. And this is from a Nigerian gay. And this story was widely reported by Al Jazeera. The African church must open its mind to honest conversations. The African bishops need to stop doing the talking and start listening to LGBTI people. We are not making much progress with the debate in Africa. As for the Bible and scripture, I just try to do my best to live the way I believe a good person should and leave the book to others who do a great job twisting it into what they want to believe. This is actually a quote taken from Davis Makiela. He's a Nigerian gay man. He's been on asylum because he was found to be gay. The two quotes I've just given above reflect the lived realities of many LGBTQ people in West Africa. Many of West African countries have laws either inherited from colonial masters or passed by its leadership, criminalizing homosexuality, affecting LGBTQI persons. In 2014, the former president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Goodluck Jonathan, signed into law the Same-Sex Marriage Prohibition Act. A similar law was passed in October in 2014 by the then president, Yaya Jame, at Gambia. In Burkina Faso, although the laws are silent on same-sex practices, there are campaigns for similar laws, and likewise in Liberia. Also, there is a wave of violence and arbitrary arrest in Ivory Coast, Mali, and Senegal that target LGBTI persons. The same thing exists in Ghana. The case for lesbians is less clear, irrespective of this lack of clarity. Lesbian, bisexual, queer, and trans persons are not spared in the abuse faced by LGBTI persons in the country. In Nigeria, in addition to the same-sex marriage prohibition law, the criminal code provides punishment of 14 years in prison for canon knowledge of any person against the order of nature. In 2000 and 2001, the northern states in Nigeria adopted Islamic Sharia law under which homosexuality can be punished by death. In Sierra Leone, Section 61 of the Offenses Against the Person Act of 1861 criminalizes burglary with punishment ranging from 10 years to life imprisonment. Cases of mob attacks against same-sex loving people exist and cut across all countries using these laws as instruments. The laws, policies, and practices as they currently exist in most of West Africa do not in any way support or reflect the various commitments made to promote and protect human rights of all persons at the national, regional, and international levels. Though all religions preach love, this is not reflected in the way LGBTI persons are treated in most West African countries. And even when they rely on families who should be a source of support, that doesn't happen. That support does not come. The challenge is, as I'm saying in this slide, there has been an interaction between laws, policies, and practices in West Africa. The challenges with laws and policies in most of West African countries is their interaction with religion and the people's culture. And so it's really difficult to say this is what the law says and this is what our culture or our religion says. And I speak specifically based on my work in West Africa. My recent work in four countries in Nigeria, Sierra Leone, and Liberia provide evidence for my assertion. The former president of Nigeria, in justifying the passage of the same-sex marriage prohibition in 2014, said that the majority of Nigerians agitated for the passage of this law which criminalizes same-sex behavior. You might like to note that Nigeria is a secular state and according to a 1914 report by the World Factbook, 49% of its citizens practice Christianity, 49 practice Islam, about 0.9 practice other religions. That means that half of Nigerians or more than 90% or even more than that, you know, practice one religion or the other. And this has not in any way reflected in the way they treat 
treat LGBT queer people in the country. What fuels a non-acceptance of LGBT queer people in West Africa? There's this notion of borrowed cultures and behavior. This has helped to close all conversations on the rights of LGBT persons. There's also lots of teachings focusing on one narrative about Africa and how the culture is started and nothing is changing. And so I, I'd like to talk a little about the role of the church. I am a member of Interfaith Diversity Network of West Africa and I actually sit as the chair of the board. What I'd like to start with, here, I want to ask what has really changed? So in 16, 2016, the network um, identified and partnered with um, progressive bishops, Muslim clerics and traditional rulers. The support the network has experienced from religious leaders, I must say, has been really, really informal. They do not want us to say that they partner with us in any way, which means that what they are doing or their support isn't supposed to be heard by others. So um, we have provided support. I mean, Interfaith Diversity Network of West Africa has provided support um, by making LGBT, LGBTI persons feel really welcome. You know. We also um, have a few traditional leaders who have supported the leadership of, leadership of LGBTI persons as some um, cultural community leaders or gatekeepers. So, for instance, uh, Davis Makayala now currently lives in Ghana and he's in, in the Council of Chiefs. And we consider that a very progressive um, uh, movement move. Some um, of, uh, of, uh, of um, religious leaders have also preached messages that counter voices of oppression and rejection. And we have a few cases in Ghana and in Togo and Liberia. Some provide shelter for rejected LGBTI persons. We have cases like that in Ghana. Imams have been mentored to mentor others in their various countries, and we have cases from Ghana and Liberia. Bishop of the Anglican um, Diocese of Cape Coast, uh, West Africa, has been really supportive. Then the Council of Churches in Togo have also have shown some support. However, the work that remains to be done for decriminalization of decriminalizing LGBTI persons and accepting them as part of the society has to move faster than it's moving. We need to move from little acknowledgement of what religious leaders are doing to when they begin to accept people as equal citizens. West Africa and Africa indeed has a lot of work to do. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you very much, my sister. It's the same everywhere, isn't it? Mm. One thing stri strikes me about Nigeria, with a Muslim North and a Christian South, it must be quite difficult for government to find a way of accommodating everyone. Uh, when, when I lived in Nigeria, there was a... The, the criminal code in the south, of course, but the penal code in the north. And um, in broad terms, they were very, very similar, but that was a way of bringing people together in a, in a, in a way. So uh, uh, certainly the government of Nigeria, I think, is placed probably in a very difficult position, even if it wanted to do anything. There's enough trouble at the moment and in the north. Um with the killing of, of, of Christians and taking hostages and so on. So um, whether that's different from, from other places, whether that's a, a signal difference from other places, I, I don't know. But thank you very much, uh, Ngozi. Um, our final speaker in this panel is the Reverend Ecclesia Delange, who is the director of the Inclusive and Affirming Ministries in South Africa. So welcome, Reverend Ecclesia.